I'm Zoe. And I'm Chandi. And this is Bound by the Cloak. Welcome to Bound by the Cloak, Minisode 4. On this Minisode, we wanted to have a brief discussion about healthy eating habits and what we normally look out for when it comes to eating healthy. Sometimes we see words like organic, or we simply just pay attention to calories without looking at the rest of the ingredients. And sometimes those other ingredients are important because they may or may not be as healthy as we would like to think. I don't think most people really take a look at the majority of the ingredients. I know I don't. Chandi, you said you don't. (laughs) Whether it's spinach wraps that don't really contain like an actual solid amount of spinach or processed foods that contain harmful food coloring and dyes, sometimes it can be hard to avoid these ingredients if that's what you're actually trying to do. I've been trying to eat a lot healthier lately. Well, I mean, I've, I've always been pretty healthy in terms of my eating habits, but just being a little bit more aware of like how much of something I'm actually consuming in terms of carbohydrates or fatty foods, sugar, like how much are you actually consuming and how much are we supposed to be consuming on a daily basis? Because I've realized that a lot of our food has added sugar in it that we don't really realize. Yeah, I guess you were just talking about how you were trying uh, keto meals. No carbs is hard, though. I don't know how you're doing it. Keto is kind of like low carbs. So it's limiting the amount of carbs because it's really hard to have no carbs and you kind of need to have some carbohydrates. But it is really hard. Like I, I, I think it was what, like the beginning of the year, I even really wanted to start. And it's like, all right, this is my goal. And then it's like, wait, but I really like potatoes. And <laughs> like rice comes with Chinese food and other types of cuisine. Wait, this is hard. Like it's actually actively very difficult to like eliminate or lessen those things. The way I do it is, all right, I'll, I'll try and maybe have a small amount of rice, right? Or no rice or with a particular meal that would generally come with rice. Now, my weakness is like potatoes, like French fries and shit like that, because it just is. That's a hard one. Because like if I'm going to have a cheeseburger, I'm going to have fries, most likely. It sucks. (laughs) So you like the fried food and I like the sweets. That's the thing. I don't really even like fried food all that much. Like I'm not like a, if I make fries at home, I actually don't fry them. You bake them? Yeah, like, do people actually fry French fries at home? I don't know. I mean, I know people are using the air fryer and stuff, which I don't have. I I mean, I haven't made French fries, I think, in 15 years, (laughs) if I ever have. What? I've never made, I haven't made French fries in, yeah, probably since, like, high school. I've had them. I haven't made them. You hear people, especially on social media, which then again, it's like, take it with maybe a grain of salt as well. People saying when they were here, they had certain issues in terms of their health based on the foods they were eating. And then when they went overseas somewhere else and they ate the same foods or similar foods, they didn't have those same issues. I find that interesting. Yeah. We had a lot of crap into our foods here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think there was a TikTok video that you came across about someone going to Germany for work or something for, I think, what, like a year long stay? Yeah. And what, they lost like 10 pounds in the first few months just because of the food that they're eating there. And that's the thing too, like, you know how we have like Fanta soda, the, mm-hmm. you know, the flavored, like fruit flavored sodas in Europe and, and probably just the rest of the world, like their Fanta sodas don't look like ours. Like ours is like some weird atomic orange for like orange flavor. And there's like, literally looks like somebody squeezed an orange into seltzer water and added sugar. That's what it literally looks like. It's odd and it tastes different, obviously. Oh, that's interesting because the Fanta in India pretty much tastes the same here. Is it the same color? It's per- so it's probably the same product then. Probably. Like so that's what their is orange happening soda. to the food <laughs> in America? What are we eating? Bullshit. That's what we're eating. I don't know. What is your like overall food journey? You said you consume too much sugar. I right? still do. That's your thing. <laughs> that's your weakness, basically. Right? It's like sugar. I- I've tried to put less sugar in my coffee, and I have put less sugar in my coffee. But I can't go sugarless coffee. I can't go. Really? No. Maybe in a year I can, but I have to like build myself up 
But you know, they say I, like certain people can drink bitter coffee and certain people can't because of the certain chemical that they have. Well, I just can't. It's not about drink. bitter coffee though, because like you can have coffee that like doesn't have a high level of, of acidity. That's what I have. A pour over coffee has like the least amount of acidity. But for me, it's just I can't drink black coffee. Well, it's not even about black coffee. Like you can still add creamer to it. Yeah, but I still need sugar. Really? <laughs> I think my body's so used to sugar. What's interesting to me is like, because now I pretty much drink coffee without sugar. So if it has sugar, it kind of annoys me. I want to get to that point. So tell me how you did that. <laughs> and honestly, it was like an awakening for me. I was like, holy shit, I'm adding too much sugar to this coffee. When I was in college, because we had a Starbucks. So I would go and, I, you know, I'd get like a large coffee you know, add my cream, add my sugar. But I'd see other people adding probably like half the amount of sugar into their coffee that I would put into mine. So then I thought maybe if I was like clever and like took two packets at the same time and opened them and like dumped them in, the people wouldn't notice that I was putting in two at one time to make it look uh. like I was putting in less. But at a certain point, I'm like, okay, clearly if I need to put six packets of sugar into this coffee and these people are adding only two, there's a problem. You were embarrassed. Yeah. I yeah. want to be embarrassed. I, I was like, I'm not embarrassed of putting eight. Holy shit. I <laughs> packets of I was, sugar. I was like, clearly this is a lot of sugar. And so I started to just less and less, right? I'm like, all right, I'm going to put four in. And then, you know, eventually you work your way into like barely any. But then also when I started working in the city, I, I noticed in my office, well, number one, people in New York, there are people obviously they use milk and cream. I use cream. I don't use milk. But there, there are also people who just drink it black. But what I also noticed is that people weren't really putting any sugar into their coffee at all there. And I was like, what? Because I would still put like, you know, at that point, I was still putting four in my coffee. I went from like maybe eight to six to four, right? I'm noticing this. And then I'm like, you know what? Let me just now I'll go down to two packets. And then eventually it's like, let me just try this with none. And it was fine. I got so used to it. And the thing is, the more sugar you have, the less you realize how sweet it is. Once you start with no sugar and you start to add sugar, you're like, this is sweet, even with like two packets. I've gotten to the point now where I also don't really add salt to my food at all, unless it absolutely needs something. So I don't really add sugar to anything and I don't add salt to anything. And I things that are overly sweet at this point, I don't eat too much of them. Like maybe once in a while, I kind of have like a thing where I'm like, all right, I need chocolate or I need bubble tea, right? I'm like, all right, I need something. But and even when I order bubble tea, I'm pretty much getting like almost no sugar in it. If, if it's the kind where you can control the sugar level, I'm totally yeah. fine with saying no sugar or like 30% sugar. When I was a younger kid, we ate a lot of sugar. We would have cake for dessert every day. We would have ice cream. I mean, I was little, but you know, my mother developed diabetes. And so then the family activities of having dessert every day changed like no dessert. So the only person in my family, you know, living at home that would consume that amount of sugar would be my dad. And he still has a very serious sweet tooth. He'll buy ice cream. I don't touch it. I can look at it and not want it. I remember as a kid going to a candy store and you know, they hand out free samples. Mm -hmm. So my mother was getting like sugar-free candy. And the lady looked at me and she goes, oh, would you like a free sample of chocolate or something? And I was like, no, thank you. And she thought it was insane. I was like a 10 year old that did not want the candy. <laughs> but yeah, like I go through phases of maybe wanting something sweet, but then it kind of just dies off. Like I might have a soda every now and then. It's just really sweet. I had one yesterday just because I had nachos. And, and so the thing I had mentioned to you, I think like maybe last week or the week before was looking up how much sugar we should be consuming, which you know, it looks like it is different for men or women, but obviously that's debatable on whether that's accurate. I know like doctors and health people will say, of course that's accurate, but everybody's different. Just like BMI levels, you know, depending on your body type or appropriate or inappropriate, right? Because BMI is based on like men's body is not women's. You know, those things are kind of like, once again, take it with a grain of salt, whether it applies to you or not. Or a grain of sugar, if you know what I mean. Oh, that was good. <laughs> not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we're trying to say no. <laughs> Limit the sugar, Chandi. Me and Chandi are both really big on coffee. She has her pour over thingy and I have an espresso machine. But I also am really, really into tea. Like I love tea. If you are also into tea, you need to check out Sip Tea Shop. 
Drinking tea can be a full mind, body, and spiritual experience that surely helps me unwind after a long, stressful day. With a variety of different herbal notes and flavors, Sip Tea Shop has a tea for everyone. For instance, take my personal favorite, the Unwind, which has chamomile, lavender, and has a great aroma of fresh roses. It really helps you to relax at the end of a long day. To find out more about their great collection of teas, go to thesipteashop.com. That's T-H-E-S-I-P-T-E-A-S-H-O-P.com. Also check out their Instagram at instagram.com slash sip underscore tea shop. That's S-I-P underscore T-E-A-S-H-O-P. Drinking like a bottle of iced tea that I would think would be healthier because in my opinion, it doesn't have as much sugar as a can of soda. But then when you look at the bottle, you realize that, wait, this one bottle is like the total amount of sugar I should be consuming in one day. Yeah, we tend to forget about that, right? I guess I don't look at that. I My thing is, yeah, I look at the overall calories, which doesn't really help in some cases. That's the thing. I stopped looking so much at calories because you can have a lot of calories, but not consume a large amount of fat or, or carbohydrates, right? Like It's like looking at the actual ingredients helps because you you notice how much so, uh, sodium is in something. You notice how much sugar is in something. Yeah. Really looking at the label as a whole, looking at the carbohydrates, looking at what nutrients are in it. What are you actually getting from this? Because calories is more like, all right, calorie counting, you know, like if I'm doing that, that's one thing. So like look at everything and kind of consider it as a whole. Looking at one thing is probably not the best idea. There's some people who don't look at anything. My dad just buys things. Buy a frozen pizza, which I, I mean, frozen pizza is not a problem for me. I like it. I, when I buy things, maybe it's just because I got this from my mother, which is look at how much sodium is in it. Look at how much sugar is in it. And it's not that I have any like health issues when it comes to sugar or salt. I don't because I generally don't eat that much of them. When something has too much salt, it, you can tell and you can taste it. And I'm not interested in that taste. And when something is too sweet, I'm not interested in that taste either. I, I like more bitter, natural flavors. Would you say you you have a healthy diet now? I definitely have a, a healthy diet for the most part. I mean, like I said, there are times when, you know, you just kind of go through like, all right, I just want a burger and fries today. And that's the thing, like a burger and fries in itself isn't necessarily unhealthy. I think we tend to think of certain things as just being unhealthy. And so it's, it's like how you eat them, right? How much of it you eat as well. But yeah, there's those times when I'm like, I need a burger and fries. I need a milkshake. And like, I mean, everything in moderation, right? What's something that you cannot stop yourself from having? Cake. Oh, you cake. mean like, I mean, not on a daily basis. But still, like, that's what, that's like your thing, cake. Yeah, I mean, I probably get that from my dad, you know, sweet tooth. And not to group everybody into one group, but I can say that a lot of the Indian people that I have met in my life are into, like, sweets. Or really? have a high, like, threshold for sweet things. I don't know. My family wasn't always really big on sweet. I mean, like when I say like we would have dessert, I mean, I'd probably be, that's it, right? Like, but for the most part, we were really balanced in our diet, vegetables, fruits, protein, carbohydrates, like an adequate um, amount of that per meal. But when my mother found out she had diabetes, like she really went on this like eating healthy thing and she didn't have to take insulin or anything like that. The things I learned were that carbohydrates and starches tend to turn to sugar. So yeah. like if you're already consuming sugar, rice is going to turn to sugar, potatoes are going to turn to sugar, corn is going to turn to sugar in your body. Basically, we're consuming a ton of sugar. Yeah, maybe that's why the whole like, I mean, India has such a, well, also has a ton of people. So when you have more people, you have more instances of certain things, right? And diabetes is a huge problem in, in India and especially like in South India where rice is a staple, like you said, turns to sugar. That's another thing too. It's like also alcohol turns to sugar in your body. So like beer, wine, that's how your body processes things. It breaks it down into these simple things, right? Like, you know, once I, I think it might've been like, around, yeah, about 10, that's kind of like how my family changed eating habits. And it, like I said, it's not that we really ate super unhealthy. It's just that large consumption of sugar mixed with everything else that turns to sugar, not helping. And, and some people will develop health issues and some don't. Some people are completely fine with 
exercise probably yeah. plays a role in that or sometimes that's just people's thing. body type that's the thing i don't get enough exercise i used to definitely need to do a lot more just because working all the time not having the free time to actually do what i like to do in terms of exercise i'm really big on like cycling and biking so probably get into that it's starting to get warm like you hear about all these different diets but at the same time there's such a huge like business and people try it because they want a quick fix, you know, to lose weight. But studies show that these diets generally aren't so helpful because consistency is key and it's hard to be consistent with these diets over time. At this point, I wouldn't even say that I'm on a diet. I would say that I'm just changing up the way that I eat. But I wouldn't really call it a diet. I'm not on this active program. To lose weight. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not like strictly adhering to something. It's, it's just general health for me. I just want to make sure that my body is healthier than it was before. Especially at this point too, when things are super expensive, right? Groceries are, are really expensive. So it's kind of hard to just get what you want to eat. Yeah, yeah. And also the time to make healthy food or... Yeah, like if you're working and commuting. That's hard. I remember when I was working in the city yeah. at one point, it was hard to make something in the morning or even the day before and take it. So if it's an yeah. hour and a half one-way commute, just oh, so yeah. tired <laughs> coming back. I know. That's why like, I order my food, groceries, right? Have it delivered. Because at this point, even going to the grocery store is just annoying. Unless I absolutely have to. So I'll have everything that I kind of need and maybe make like, a simple lunch or if it's leftovers from dinner or if it's like you know just something that's ready made that's pretty healthy but yeah i mean there are also obviously times where i'm at lunch and i don't have anything i didn't bring anything with me so i have to go get something and those are the times when i'm either just gonna get a salad or uh -huh. yeah i'm gonna like make my way to chick-fil-a or some other place and get something good like i think a lot of times especially people in other countries right when they kind of have a an outside looking in view of America in terms of health. America is seen as unhealthy or Americans and the way we eat is seen as unhealthy. But yeah, asking people here to just eat healthy isn't necessarily like the way to solve the problem because I don't think people are intentionally eating unhealthy. I think mm -hmm. it's also just the food that we're presented with. The food that's less healthy is usually less expensive and more processed. And so not that like, you know, everybody is struggling to eat healthy food here in that way. It's just even for a regular average, like middle class American, the time and energy it takes to create a healthy meal is a lot. There's no free time for that. And it does cost more than it probably should. Yeah, it's like a poverty issue or something that is more on the socioeconomic. Like, I, I wouldn't even say it's just poverty because yeah the the people who are actually like poor yeah they have a hard time getting access to healthy food or like actual like food that you can like might be a food desert there may be no grocery store in some places in particular neighborhoods but even in terms of middle class it's like what's the easiest thing the most accessible things to to get for me to eat and are those things healthy if we're just talking about going to a restaurant and getting a chicken sandwich that shouldn't be super unhealthy it shouldn't right because it's what it's chicken yeah bread and whatever like that shouldn't be super unhealthy because you can make the same you can make the same thing at home and for some reason that would be then seen as healthier if i make a salad at home that's healthier than going to a restaurant any restaurant and getting a salad it's also like portion size of the salad when you go to a restaurant is insane that's enough salad for three or four people it's seen as your meal which is like absurd yeah, if you make it yourself, you know what's what is going in it versus getting food from outside. You don't know exactly know what's. But right. then also at the same time, the products that we buy that we use to make things at home, we don't know what's in those products, right? Be seen as organic or it says it's organic, but yeah, like really, what is organic? It's probably grown right next to the fruits and vegetables that are not organic. So you can't not protect food from insects and bugs you know that might or like what is it like whatever might attack right like while it's growing bugs yeah past insects or yeah. past diseases for for fruits and vegetables like it, we have ways of protecting them i don't know it's it's it really is hard to just say to people all right like try and find something healthy because we don't really know what the hell is in our food you know it's like controlled how it's grown how it's distributed how we receive it you know, when we receive it, all these things are, they, and they've changed over time too. You know, it's like the quality of food you also get. There's a lot. Besides just growing your own food, do we really want to have to worry about all these things? And do, we generally don't think about these things on a daily basis. You know, as a kid, we, you know, I, we had a garden in, in the backyard. So 
we grew a good amount of the fruits and vegetables we were actually eating. I mean, that might be a great place to start is like, even if you don't have your own plot or land to rent in a community garden, rent a plot in a community garden. Yeah, you can start creating things your own way and really seeing how the produce is growing because you're yeah. the one who's putting the seeds in the soil, you're letting it grow. Because there's all these like, you know, health issues that arise from like the things that we just eat. Could we possibly, you know, help ourselves out by just growing our own food and supplying our own our own food sources? I mean, you know, buying a loaf of bread versus baking your own bread. I would prefer like if I had the time, I would bake my own bread. Cause then at least I yeah. know where I know where it comes from. Well, that's the thing. That's the common denominator in all of this is this time, right? Time yeah. and also, yeah, how the information is presented to people. Very savvy, right? Because it how it's presented is is done in a way that, that boosts revenue sales for food companies, produce companies. So so check your labels. So yeah, here's <laughs> here's some some fun tips about uh, being a little more healthy. What which things that maybe I do or you do, which is like yeah, check your labels, not just for calories, but like sodium content, sugar content, and whatnot, fat content. See if you can find the source of your food. I mean, that's my thing. I like to know where it came from. Like get an idea. Shop locally. Grow your own food if you can. I mean, I'm like it's it's not about telling people like exactly like what they should do, right? Or how they should live their lives. It's just kind of like thinking about where everything kind of comes from and understanding like processed foods have things added to them that are necessary. They don't necessarily benefit your health. Thanks for listening to Miniso 4. Thanks for joining us about our discussion on healthy foods and living green. Drop us a line at info at boundbythecloak.com. Hit us up on Twitter or Instagram. Subscribe, follow. We are on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. We are wherever it is that you listen to your podcasts. We will see you next time. <laughs>